What's up guys, my name is Anton Suarez. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Mac OS X virtual machine using this tool created by Foxlet. And I found this recently on my searching through Reddit and uh, I found this GitHub repository describing how you can make a simple Mac OS virtual machine that's accelerated with KVM. So to start, I'll have this link in the description below. Um, and we'll follow, I'm just going to follow the exact same steps you will follow. You'll have to get the version for your distro of Linux. For me, I'm running Antergos, which is Arch Linux. So I'm going to be using this one. I've already downloaded this, but it'll just make sure you have all the packages. So right off the bat, we'll, we want to grab our package for our boot image. So I'm going to do sl dot slash jumpstart dot sh, and I'm going to type in high Sierra. So basically what this is going to do is grab the actual base system DMG from the Apple servers is what I'm assuming and what seems to be happening here. Usually you can't get a base system image without a Mac. And I've tried this on a couple systems now and it seems that hardware isn't an issue. I've tried it on a lower powered computer and it seemed to work. It booted and I was very surprised. So after that we've successfully got the image. It so of course depend on your internet size things like that, we're going to now go on to the image create for QEMU. I'm going to give it about 45 gigs just for the safe side. Obviously, if you have a bigger hard drive, you can give it more space. QCow2, and I'm going to call it Mac.QCow2, and I'm going to give it 45 gigabytes. So we'll do that, and now we have our drive. So. Now we have to add this to the end of the basic sh. Now I've already done this, but we'll do it anyway. sudo nano, and we'll do basic.sh. Now that we're in the file, we'll go to the bottom and we'll paste the two things it says to paste here in the tutorial. So obviously you would name whatever you called your uh, qcow2 image, uh, whatever you named it above, you'd put it here. So that's what I did. I mine is mac.qcow2. So we can exit that and you'll save the changes. Next is pretty much it. We're going to run it by launching basic.sh. And to do that, we're going to do dot slash basic.sh. And when we do that, it's going to launch up QEMU. It's like a script that's written to the uh, repository. And now we're going to boot into the Mac OS X install image. And I believe by default, we're in verbose, so we get to see if we're booting or not. This is very helpful, especially when you're looking for errors, if a kex doesn't load or something like that. You can even do this on a regular Mac if, if necessary. There, there are hotkeys for that. But for this purpose, it's, it helps a lot, especially if you do get hung up somewhere along the way. You can then type that error in and see what you'd have to do. I've done this a couple times now on two different machines, and it seems to work relatively indiscriminately on the machines I've run it on, which is surprising. Usually a, a Mac virtual machine wouldn't work on on different hardware or different virtualized hardware, especially with QEMU. So now that we booted up to the base image, now the, the base image isn't an installation. It isn't the um, actual file image for uh, Mac OS X. It's just the utilities image basically or recovery. So what we can do now is go to disk utility And then here we can find our QEMU hard drive. So I, I said 45 gigs, it made it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to call it Mac OS X. And I'm going to erase it. And you want to make sure it's a GUID partition, GUID partition type. And yeah, so now that it's done, our installer will see it when we go to install. So we can exit that now. And now we can say reinstall Mac OS X. So we'll continue, we'll agree, and now we'll choose the Mac OS X hard drive we just formatted, and we'll click install. And again, I believe it, this varies on internet speeds, um, I've seen it take longer than 15 minutes, I'm a direct wired connection, so it's a little bit faster. So I'll see you guys in about 13 to 14 minutes once this is finished. So now that the second part of the installation has finished, we now can boot again to the Mac OS X 
drive. And another check that you can see is now that we have a recovery drive as well. So we will also now boot into our newly completed Mac OS X hard drive. Enter. Called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, press Command F5 now to turn it on and set up your Mac. If you would like to learn how to use VoiceOver to set up your Mac, press the Escape key. That scared me so much. <laughs> okay. I'm going to select the country. Keyboard. Sure. Uh, no, no information now. Uh, we will skip, set this up later. Okay, man. We will agree to the terms of service of absolutely. And let's type in this is a virtual machine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Let's create our account and we'll be set up here. Uh, sure. Mac, Apple can take all the data it wants from this virtual machine that it thinks is a Mac. That's fine with me. And there we go. We are fully booted in Mac OS X High Sierra. It works really well, surprisingly well for a virtual machine. And of course, you can go look at some previous videos I've covered on QEMU. There are some more terminal commands you could use to allocate more memory, more RAM, all these different things to this virtual machine. But as it stands, it runs pretty well. We can go up here to about this Mac. We could take a look at the specs and what it thinks it is. So it thinks it's a iMac late 2009. It has two gigs of RAM given from the virtual machine. And it thinks it has an Intel Core Duo, which is fine. I mean, if you had to do testing purposes, I could see this working very well. If you gave it some more RAM, it'd probably work even better. Now, what are the purposes for this? Well, you could run emulators for the phone. You could, uh, with QEMU, there's even the possibilities of pass through. So technically, you should be able to pass through a USB thumb drive into the Mac OS X uh, environment, which is really cool. If you can go even farther than that, there's GPU pass-through, things I've tried to do in the past, but have not had much success. But those are possibilities of things you can do, especially from what I can see, development for iPhones could be an interesting way to be able to run the iPhone emulator in an environment like this. If you gave it some more RAM, some more CPU cores, you'd probably have no problem doing that. And so that's going to be it for this video. Let me know if you have any issues with trying to run this virtual Mac OS X virtual machine. Again, I'll have a link in the description below for the documentation, the GitHub, anything you'll need in the description below. I'm going to be trying to upload a little bit more regularly. I work full time. I have college full time. I do a lot of crazy things. So, but I'm going to be covering a few more of my projects that I've been doing as I get further into my computer science degree. So, uh, yeah. As always, my name is Anton Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.